What's up everybody, it's Andrew and in this video I'm going over different ways to eliminate light flicker in your animations. There's a lot to go over, so I'm just going to get right into it. I see this one quite a bit. It's filming outdoors. Now I know what you might be thinking. It's a nice day out, the sun's shining, the ground gives you a nice natural terrain or background for your animation, but unless you're very, very fast at it, it's something you definitely want to avoid just because there's too many variables outside your control. Now the ideal setup is inside a room with no windows and no ambient light of any kind, but I know that's not always possible, so the next best thing is to pull the curtains or shut the blinds, and that'll make a world of a difference. If you're using a smartphone for your animation, you can plug in your earbuds and use the volume control to capture your images. This will give you a little bit of distance away from your film subject. And it will keep you from casting shadows over the setting. I sometimes use my Apple Watch that Bluetooth to my phone so there's no physical connection to my camera. Another thing that people don't think about or consider is the color of the clothing that they're wearing. Sometimes brightly colored clothes can affect an animation. You want to go with something dark, the darker the better. The last thing that can affect the lighting is the power itself. Sometimes you have surges in electricity or pools in electricity depending on where you live and the power that is supplied. And you can also have appliances that draw a lot of power like a central heat and air unit or a microwave or a dryer can affect the brightness or dimness of your lighting. If you're looking for recommendations on lighting, I would recommend these. These are LED desk lamps that I found on Amazon for about $12. And all they are is uh, little lamps that are flexible, they're lightweight, and they come with uh, little clamps that you can attach to your desk or table. Comes with a power supply cord. All you need is a USB style plug for your wall outlet and you're good to go. I like the LED because they're consistent, they don't use a lot of power, and they don't get hot under heavy use. So you plug these in and then you have three brightness settings for your animating needs. I really like these. These come on with just the slightest touch. I like that and they can be positioned in a lot of different ways. And it comes with two. Another thing that I like about these is that they come with a rechargeable battery. So this can run off of uh, the juice from the battery. If you're having some kind of issue with incandescent bulbs or the power supply. Uh, and you can get on a full charge several hours on the highest setting that it has. These are just really great lights. The batteries are rechargeable and you just plug those in. Make sure if you're using them plugged in, you don't have the battery in so you don't damage the battery. Anyway, I recommend these. These are really great. Okay, here I just want to go over what the different lights are contributing to the shot. You have your background lights, you have your fill lights, and then you have your key light. And then finally, be sure to turn off the room light, and that will help eliminate shadows that you cast while you're animating. Now I know this is subject to a lot of different configurations, but this is the basic setup that I use. You have your background light and that will be toward the very back of your set. Then you have your fill light or lights in this case. I like to have two on both sides of the figure just so I get that nice even effect. You can certainly get away with just one light if you so choose. And the final light is the key light. In most circumstances, this will be the brightest light, and you want to place that directly over what you're filming. You have to keep in mind that this is just a basic setup, and you can play with this any way you want. And remember that your camera is not your eyes, so it needs as much light as it can to film quality images. All right, I think I've said everything I can think of on this subject. Be sure and let me know if you like this kind of video, this style of video where we talk about filming, tips and tricks, different methods for filming. I don't always think about these things, and 
I usually have other priorities, but if you like these kind of videos, I'll certainly keep making them. Anyway, I'm Andrew, guys. Until next time. Go, go, go.